students this is lecture number 36 where we are going to start a topic called game theory this is the most interesting aspects of linear programming and its applications so we will see how game theory is a very good application of linear programming and how we can make use of the linear programming techniques to solve the problem of game theory. Now, you will realize that playing a game is nothing but a decision making process. That is, when you are playing a game with your opponent, suppose there are two pe people who are playing the game, then uh, you make a move and the other person makes a move. So, this is just dependent upon the decision that you are making. Now, there are three types of uh, decision making problems. The first one is under certainty that is everybody is aware that he is supposed to uh, make this move and that is based upon the uh, knowledge about the other person's moves. The second type of problems come across when there is some risk that is involved that there is a risk whether uh, my move is going to be the correct move or not. And the third one is under uncertainty that is the situation where one person does not know what the other person is going to make the next move. So, let us first formally define what do we mean by a game. A game is a general situation of conflict and competition in which two or more competitors are engaged in the decision making process in anticipation of certain outcomes over the time space. So, in other words game is a ideal example of a decision making process. Now, the players are defined as the competitors or the individuals who are involved in playing the game. For example, a group of individuals or organizations all these are examples of players. Uh, for example, two or more candidates contesting an election with the objective of winning the elections. So, for example, there are five uh, individuals who are contesting an election this is also a kind of a game. Second example is about advertising and other marketing campaigns between competing business firms. So, for example, uh, there are many firms who are advertising let us say soaps then this is also a matter of competition and it can be considered as a game. The third are the contractors who are filing their bids to win some bid, bidding uh, contracts, some business contracts. For example, uh, let us say the bids which are uh, filed in for uh, uh, constructing of a house, uh, there this is also a situation of competition. One aspect that is required to be understood is the number of players. Now, there could be two kinds of situation. The first one is that there are two persons who are playing the game. Uh, if a game involves only two players or competitors, it is called as a two person game. And if there are more than two persons who are involved in the game, it is called as a n person game. Now, the sum and the gains of the losses, sum of gains and losses, if in a game, the gains to one player are exactly equal to the losses to another player. So, that the total sum of the gains and losses equals 0, then the game is said to be a 0 sum game. Otherwise, it is said to be a non 0 sum game. So, the gains and the losses their total should be 0 and that is the topic of the first case that we are going to study that is the 0 sum games. Next comes the definition of strategy. Now, strategy means that the strategy for, for a player 
is the list of all possible actions or moves or courses of action that he can make for making every outcome that might arise. It is assumed that the rules governing the choices are known in advance to the players and the outcome resulting from a particular choice is also known to the players in advance and is expressed in terms of some numerical values for example, money, the percent of market share or utility. However, it is not necessary that the players have a definite information about each other's strategies. Now, uh, we will see what do we mean by optimal strategy. That particular strategy or the complete plan by which a player optimizes his gains or losses without knowing the competitor's strategy is called the optimal strategy. And the expected outcome per play when the players follow their optimal strategy is called the value of the game. Now, generally there are two types of strategies which are employed. First one is called the pure strategies. The pure strategy it, it is a decision rule which is always used by the player to select the particular course of action. Thus, each player knows in advance all the strategies out of which he always selects only one particular strategy irrespective of the strategy the other may choose. The objective of the player is to maximize the gains or minimize the losses of the opponent. Uh, the second strategy is the mixed strategies. They are when both the players are guessing as to which course of action should be selected uh, on a particular occasion with some specified probabilities. It is a mixed strategy game. This is a probabilistic situation and the objective of the player is to maximize expected gains or to minimize expected losses by making a selection among the pure strategies with fixed probabilities. Now, mathematically a mixed strategy for a player with two or more possible courses of action is the set S of n non-negative real numbers which are the probabilities whose sum is unity n being the number of pure strategies of the player. So, if we denote by p i where i goes from 1 to n the probability with which the pure strategy j would be selected then s which is given by p 1 p 2 p n subject to the p 1 plus p 2 plus p n is equal to 1 and all the p j's are greater than or equal to 0 for all j. So, with this now let us consider the first case that is the two person zero sum game. This is also called as the matrix game or the rectangular game. In this case there are two players which are called as A and B or P 1 and P 2. So, if the player A's gain is equal to the players B's losses that is the total sum of the gain and losses is 0 then it is called as a two person zero sum game. The player A has M choices that is I where I goes from 1 to up to M and similarly the player B has N choices that is J is equal to 1 to up to n this is represented in terms of columns. Now, this information can be written in this matrix notation or in a rectangular fashion and it is called as also the payoff matrix where uh, the player A is uh, shown at the top uh, first row and the first column is the player B 
uh, j go goes from 1 to up to n corresponding to the strategies of a and similarly for b i goes from 1 to up to m. The a 1, a 1 1, a 1 2 etcetera these are the uh, these are the called the uh, uh, payoff metrics which represents the probabilities with which uh, the A and B players are going to play the game. Now, the game is played as follows A chooses the strategy I and B chooses the strategy J without each other knowing what the other has chosen. Then the choices are disclosed and A receives the AIJ or B pays AIJ. So, this is the same equivalent amount whether A receives AIJ or B play pays AIJ. Now, we need to make some assumptions of the game. Number 1, each player has available to him a finite number of possible courses of action. The list may not include same number of choices for each players. As you have seen in the example, it is not necessary that M and N are same, they could be different also and that is the why reason it is called as a rectangular game and not as a square game. Second assumption says that player A attempts to maximize gains and player B minimizes losses. Third assumption says the decision of both players are made individually prior to the play with no communication between them. Number 5, the decisions are made simultaneously and also announced simultaneously so that neither player has an advantage resulting from direct knowledge of other players decision. Number 6, both the players know not only their own possible payoffs, but also the others play players payoff. So, since this is a decision making problem, let us understand what is the problem of game theory. It says that solving of a game means whether there is an optimal way to play the game or not. So, we have to define the game and then find out whether there is an optimal way to play the game or not. So, let us take an example. In this example, we have uh, two players A and B and as you can see that B has 4 choices and A has 5 choices. Uh, they are shown in this payoff matrix uh, A i j where some of them are positive and some of them are negative. In the last column, I have also indicated the row minimum corresponding to each of the rows and at the last row I have shown the column maximum uh, which are shown uh, by indicating the maximum entry in that particular column. Now, what is the meaning of these row minimum and column maximum? I will explain in a minute. Now, A wishes to obtain the largest possible a i j by choosing some i where i goes from 1 to up to 5 and b is determined to make a's gain the minimum possible by his choice of j is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. So, a is called the maximizing player and b is called the minimizing player. Now, let us look at the arguments of a the player A and arguments of the player B separately. Now, first of all, let us look at the arguments of the player A. Now, on the first column, I have shown the choices of A and in the second column, I have shown the choices of B. So, when A, the player A makes a move, makes a choice, then the player B has to make a choice. So, what does it say? It says that if the player A chooses his move as i is equal to 1, then the player uh, B makes a choice j is equal to 3. Now, why did this come? 
let us look at the given table. Now, here you find if a is equal to 1, if i is equal to 1, the player a makes this choice, then it is his objective that b should have minimum. So, amongst this 4, minus 2, minus 4 and minus 1, the he will want that it is the minimum. So, the minimum is minus 4 and that is the reason why minus 4 is indicated in the row number 1. So, the choice of j of b is j is equal to 3 because this 4 was coming from j is equal to 3. Again let us look at the second situation when i is equal to 2 the choice of b is j is equal to 3. Why is that so? Let us look at the table again i is equal to 2 and amongst this 3 1 minus 1 2 the least is minus 1 and that is what is shown over here and it is again corresponding to the j is equal to 3. that is j is equal to 3. Let us come to the i is equal to 3 case. When i is equal to 3, when i is equal to 3, then you find that the minimum is occurring at minus 2 and minus 2, which is corresponding to j is equal to 3 and j is equal to 4. So, there are two possibilities j is equal to 3 or j is equal to 4. And the same thing happens for i is equal to 4, j is equal to 2 or 3 and for i is equal to 5, j is equal to 1. Also, in the last column I have indicated the gain or the loss for the player A. So, you can see that uh, at each of the places uh, we have to look at the one that is the minimum. So, in the first case it is minus 4, second case it is minus 1, minus 1 and then minus 2, minus 3, minus 3. So, all these entries are indicated in the last column over here. So, this is the argument of the player A. So, A should try to maximize his least gain, A should try to maximize his least gain and that is the reason why we need this quantity max over i min over j a i j and that is what is indicated in this entry minus 1 because this is the maximum of all these entries. It is the maximum over i for minimum over j. Now, let us look at the argument of B. It is the other way round. Now, for the argument of B, we find that if uh, the choice of B is j is equal to 1, then the choice of A is i is equal to 1. How is that so? Just let us go back to the table. If j is equal to 1, then i is also equal to 1. If j is equal to 1, then i is equal to 1 and his gain of loss of b is 4. Let us look at the table. Here you are. This is gain or loss is 4 and uh, similarly, um, for the other columns also, when j is equal to 2, i is equal to 3 and gain or loss is 3. And the second and the third and the fourth column also has to be done in the same way. But since this is the player B, so B should settle for minimum of J maximum over I of A i J and that is the reason why this entry is nothing but the minimum over J maximum over I A i J. So, what does it mean? 
that for the player A, for the player A we had max min of A i j and for the player B we have min max of A i j. So, what do we observe that in this situation both these quantities is same that is it is equal to minus 1. Thus, it means that A uh, chooses the strategy i is equal to 2 and B chooses the strategy j is equal to 3. <coughs> and therefore, the arguments and of A and B both the players lead to the same payoff because this minus 1 is the same. Now, you will wonder why this is so, but in general it may not be true that these two values are the same. Now, just look at this example here in this example we have two players A and B and we find that the row minimum corresponding to each row uh, 2 minus 3 and 7 minimum the minimum is minus 3 second row minus 7 4 minus 5 minimum is minus 7 and like this uh, for the other rows also uh, the third row also 5 minus 6 6 minimum is minus 6 and the maximum of this is minus 3. Coming to the uh, columns you find that out of 2 minus 7 and 5 the maximum is 5 similarly for the second one it is 4 and similarly for the third one it is 7, but its minimum is 4. So, what do we find that max i min j a i j is minus 3 and min j max i a i j is 4, they are not same, they are not same and in fact uh, we observe that uh, maximum of i minimum of j a i j is strictly less than minimum of j maximum of i a i j. Now, let us define uh, another definition which is the definition of the saddle point. If the payoff matrix a i j is such that max min of a i j is equal to min max of a i j is equal to a r s that is both of them are same equal to a r s. Then it is said to have a saddle point at the point r s and the optimal strategies of the players a and b are said to be at i is equal to r and j is equal to s respectively and a r s is said to be the value of the game such games are called as pure strategy games. So, the games with saddle point or the pure strategy games uh, it the objective is to know how these players must choose their respective strategies, so that they may optimize their payoffs. Such a decision making criteria is called as a mini max max min principle. This always leads to the best possible selection of a strategy for both players. For example, for player A minimum value of each row represents the least gain or the payoff to him if he chooses this particular strategy. The, these are written in the matrix by the row minima he will then select the strategy that gives largest gain among the row minimum values. This choice of player A is based on the maxi min principle and the corresponding game is called as the maxi min value of the game. On the other hand the player B who is assumed to be a loser the maximum value in each column represents the maximum loss to him if he chooses this particular strategy. 
these are written in the payoff matrix by column maxima. He will then select the strategy that gives minimum loss among the column uh, maximum values. This choice of player B is based on the minimax principle and the corresponding loss is the minimax value of the game. If the maximum value equals to the minimax value, then the game is said to have a saddle point or a equilibrium point and the corresponding strategies are called the optimal strategies. The amount of payoff that is V at an equilibrium point is known as the value of the game and a game may have more than one saddle point. A game which has no saddle point is solved by adopting the mixed strategies which we will be doing in the next lecture. It may be of interest to note that the value of the game in general satisfies the equation maxi mini value is less than or equal to v is less than or equal to mini max value. And secondly, a game is said to be a fair game if the lower or the maximum and upper that is minima, mini max values of the game are equal and both equal to 0. Number 3, a game is said to be strictly determinable if the lower maximin and upper minimax values of the game are equal and both equal to the value of the game. Now, the game of example 1 is a strictly determinable game value. However, the value of the game being minus 1 is not 0. So, the game is not a fair game. It is more biased towards the player B than the player A. And the game of the example 2 is a mixed strategy game because there is no saddle point in the example 2. So, with this we come to an end of the first case of the pure strategies, zero sum games. Thank you.